This is the dissection of the Aurelia aurita jellyfish. It's also known as the moon jelly. First thing I want to point out to you is that the symmetry of this organism is classified as being radial symmetry and more specifically it is known as biradial symmetry because of the fact that it has a circular shape. There is no head so it can be bisected several ways along its oral to aboral axis. However, it does have two pairs of gonads and two pairs of structures known as oral arms, which we'll be discussing later. So that is why it is classified as specifically having biradial symmetry, okay? The subumbrella is this portion of the body right here. The X umbrella, I'm going to flip the jellyfish quickly. The X umbrella is up here. This is on the aboral surface. For those of you that have watched Finding Nemo before, when Marlin and Dory are hopping on the jellyfishes, they are hopping on the jellyfish's X umbrellas. Okay. Back on the oral surface, we have structures known as the oral arms. They're these little extensions right here. There are four of them total. You can see them extending off. Okay. They surround the mouth and help gather food and bring it into the mouth. And they're attached to the subumbrella by a structure known as the manubrium. So the manubrium is basically a stalk that surrounds the mouth. And it is what attaches the oral arms. So right here is the manubrium. Okay. Nidocytes are a little bit too small to actually see because they are individual cells, but the nidocytes themselves would be located along the margin of the umbrella on these little stringy structures, which I'll be going over with you shortly. But the nidocytes are what actually discharge when a jellyfish is stinging its prey. The mouth, so you can see is back here. It sort of looks like a plus sign right here. That's the mouth of the jellyfish. I'm inserting the probe right into the mouth. Okay. The tentacles are back out along the margin. Okay. So they're these teeny tiny little structures. A lot of students tend to think that these are the tentacles, but these are actually the oral arms up here. The tentacles are located all around the margins and they are what contain the nidocytes. Each tentacle contains several nidocytes. And that is what actually does the stinging. Moving back towards the center of the organism, again on the oral surface, if you poke a probe into the mouth, you can kind of see it through the body. You can see that it's actually inside the body of the jellyfish. Right now my probe is in the gastrovascular cavity. The gastrovascular cavity is lined by gastrodermis. Gastrodermis, if you remember, is derived from endoderm, and it's got several functions, one of which is digestion. But this is also the site of gas exchange. This is where metabolic wastes are released. And this is also where gametes are discharged, okay? Coming from the gastrovascular cavity along through the umbrella of the body are radial canals. So that's what sends the nutrients out to the ring canal. The ring canal is this thicker tissue all along the margin of the umbrella. So this part right here is ring canal. So the ring canal goes all the way around the umbrella. We have four gonads, like I said, two pairs of gonads, and they are some of the easiest structures to see in the entire body. It's got some of the thickest cell layers, okay? And we can't tell if this is a male jellyfish or a female jellyfish. We would actually have to take a tissue sample to see if this is going to form sperm or eggs. And even then, it's really difficult to tell. Um, but remember that the sperm or eggs would be released from the gonad into the gastrovascular cavity and then leave the mouth of the jellyfish. Gastric pouches are a little too small to see, but they are located within the gastrovascular cavity as well. Going back out towards the margin, our final structure is one of the most difficult to find. It is even difficult to find on a microscope, but this structure right here, and there are eight of them, this guy right here is called the ropalium, okay? 
Nebral pallium is very, very interesting structure. It is one of the simplest um, nervous structures that you would find in the animal kingdom, but it is still a nervous structure, so it does help the jellyfish perceive its environment. It's got structures inside known as statocysts, and the statocysts are responsible for helping the jellyfish orient itself to right side up versus upside down. Um, the ropalium is also able to help sense light versus dark. And that is all we have for this jellyfish dissection. If you've got any questions, please make sure that you email your teacher or rewatch this video. And thank you very much for listening and watching.